start off by doing is I'm going to give us a brief whistle stop tour of Amber. So that I'll do quite quickly, and then I'll do a demonstration where you where you'll see me using all of the different bits. And I was a bit ambitious, so I've realised now when I set out what I was going to build in front of a lot of people. So let's see how that goes. Um, I have managed to build it before, so hopefully I'll manage to build it again. So I'm going to try and um, share my screen. Um, and I'm after the Amber Practical. So I'm going to give you a whistle stop tour of Amber and then we're going to all build something together. Okay. Okay, so I hope everybody can see the slides on the screen. Um, So, okay, here we go. So one of the things I personally like about Amber is, in my opinion, it gives you, um, you're looking under the hood, if you like. You're looking inside what happens in an MD simulation when you build an Amber model, which is insight that you might not always get if you're using tools that help you along a bit more. Okay, so what we need to know to get us started. So what we're gonna be using is Amber Tools. It's free software. Um, so Amber Tools is completely open source and it's made up of four basic parts. There are other bits to it too. So you can do all sorts of advanced sampling with it and metadynamics and NMR structure, all of these things. But we're just going to worry about the sort of basic parts today. So the parts that we're interested in is antechamber. An antechamber is the bit that we use for parameterization of non-standard residues or small molecules. So um, you remember from our introduction, we talked about this idea that MD simulation software has these residue templates embedded within them that enables you to assign just from a PDB file what all of the um, force field parameters are on the connectivity. Now, if you're dealing with a small ligand or a non-standard residue, of course, there won't be any of these residue templates. So we have to make our own. And we can do that with antechamber. Now, once we've um, got all of the um, residue templates we need, we can then run this program called XLEAP. And um, XLEAP associates a biomolecular structure with a force field and will then create the atomistic model that you need to run a simulation. So the next part is SANDA or SANDA.MPI. So the .MPI means it runs on multiple processors. And um, SANDA is the bit that actually does the molecular dynamics calculation. So that's the bit that um, calculates the force on each atom as a result of every other atom, moves the atoms and produces this trajectory file, which constitutes your MD movie. Now, the non-free bit of amber, which I've highlighted here in red, which is PMEMD, um, PMEMD.MPI and the CUDA version. Now, these bits are not free. And these are the bits that they do exactly the same as Sonda, but they do it faster. Um, so the GPU version, I have to say, I think it's awesome. It may not be the fastest, maybe ASMD is the fastest, but it's, I really like it. Um, and then at the end, this is free. Part of Amp Tools is CP Pretrage, which is a toolkit for manipulating and analyzing MD trajectories. So this is how, for example, you would um, image your files so that they're all in the same periodic box. You would use Pretrage to RMS fit your trajectory so it doesn't translate or rotate. You might also use it to do things like calculate specific interatomic distances. Um, it's, it's very, very powerful. 
So, um, of course, the, the reference manual is now Amber 20. It covers Amber 20 and Amber tools. And I have to say there's an awful lot to read. Um, but it's very comprehensive and actually quite usable. So, OK, so the bits that we're going to concentrate on during um, the demonstration is we're going to concentrate on the antechamber and leap modules. So um, antechamber we're going to use to build things. There are two ways to run leap. So we can either do T leap, which is command line only. So if you type T leap minus F, you can put all of your instructions in a file. I call it leap script, and then T leap will execute them. Or you can build it interactively using X leap. Um, and, you, and, and I like to do that because you can visualize your protein as you build it. So what I tend to do is I tend to build things first in X leap. And then when I've got it to work, I keep a track of all of those commands in a script that I can then rerun in T-Leap when I know that my, my setup works. So there are a few quirks to X-Leap, don't have NumLock on, and whatever you do, always use the menus to close Leap or any of the um, other windows that you might open, because if you close one window, it closes everything. And um, it's led to some um, some bad language in um, workshops before, which is, of course, fine if you're at home. Um, actually, it's, it's pretty fine if everybody understands this issue. So um, how frustrating it is. But um, yeah, be very, very careful closing Leap. OK, so what Leap does is it's connecting the protein structure with the force field and it contains these, these residue really templates that we're gonna be able to look at um, that assigns our force field parameters. And what we get out of the end is we get out a list of files that are a, a parameter file, palm top. So that means parameter and topology. So it contains the parameters and the list of connectivities. And we get another file that contains the starting coordinates. So just a note on histidine. So everybody gets stuck on histidine. Um, so of course, when you download a crystal structure, there are no hydrogens. So normally histidine will be denoted in a PDB file with the, with the residue name his. And for his, the protonation state is ambiguous. Amber actually contains three residue templates for histidine, HIE, this is the default one, HID and HIP. And which one is correct depends upon the local electrostatic environment around your histidine. So histidine, of course, has got a, is, you know, has a pKa pretty close to seven. So that means that you need to, to consider the protonation state of histidine very carefully when we're running our MD simulations. And tomorrow, when Charlie runs his Trusting Your Simulations workshop, he's going to talk about protonation states as well in more detail than I am today. So AMBER contains a number of force fields. Um, so there's a protein force field, a DNA and RNA force field. There's a carbohydrate force field and a lipid force field. There are also various water models. I always use TIP3P. Then there's this force field GAF. And this GAF means generalized amber force field. But a GAF is also something that you, that you do that's a bit wrong. If you make a GAF, then you've done something wrong. And, and, and GAF, because it is a generalized force field for, for small ligands, um, it isn't. It's quite a quick and dirty parameterization. So when you run a simulation using GAF, it's a really, really good way to get things up and started. But you might want to think very carefully about the parameterization of your ligand if you're doing something very serious. Um, so the, the, AM, the AMBER manual contains a list of all of the different force fields, even the historic ones. 
and it will give you tips on which one is 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 best for what you want to do but really i would stick with the default okay so this is how we specify our force field within leap so um this would load in the protein this would load in a, D, a dna force field i've gone for bsc1 here because that's um the force field the dna force field i was involved with here's a lipid one water this also contains the ions and gaff now sometimes you might have a cofactor in your system like you might have an atp for example or an nadh and for these common cofactors you don't necessarily have to do your own parameterization there's a really really helpful list of um, amber parameters on Richard Bryce's website and the link is down here. So that's if you if you find that you've got a, a cofactor in your system, you probably don't want to parameterize it yourself. So I would look there first in case somebody else has done it for you. Okay, so if you've got a system that requires I've said extra setup here, which I, and what I mean is just some extra extra thinking about. So, so things that you might try that you might run into trouble with. So just a few tips, right? So, so if you're running a simulation of a biomolecular complex, it's really, really important to have a ter flag. So ter means terminate. It's very important to have this ter flag between your protein and your ligand. Otherwise, things are going to go horribly wrong. So if you have more than one ligand, you need turf, like, turf flags every time there is no covalent bond between the PDB entry above and the PDB entry below. below. So, you know, if you've got a ligand, if you've got counterions, etc., etc., etc. So the other thing that you might run into problems with is if you've got di disulfide bonds. So if you've got disulfide bonds, you might have to put the covalent linkage in yourself. And that can be done in LEAP. And it's very easy, but you do need to do it. Otherwise, your simulation will go horribly wrong. If you've got coordinated metal ions, then this is probably going to be quite an advanced simulation. So things, for example, like zinc, the, or magnesium or manganese, these things will, these are coordinated systems that effectively, certainly in the case of zinc, will have what are dative bonds between your metal center and um, your coordinated ligand. So it's, so it's sort of a bit like a covalent bond and it needs careful, careful consideration. And Chimera has a metal center builder that I really like. If you've got phosphorylated amino acids or glycosylated amino acids, any sort of post-translational modification, you'll need to think about that carefully too. And you'll be pleased to know that there are parameters for a lot of um, amino acids with post-translational modifications available on Richard Bryce's um, website. Um, and the other thing that you'll need to worry about is if you're running a simulation of a membrane protein like Michelle's wonderful protein, then you'll need to make sure it's correctly embedded in a bilayer. And all of these things are complications that depending on the system you're interested in, you might come across. Okay, so now I'm going to um, move on to the next stage. Maybe if I just stop sharing my screen, I could just ask if there are any questions on what we've said for, so far. Um, if anyone's got any questions. Uh, can you hear me? I can indeed, yeah. Hey, um, could you say, um, was it, uh, could you say something? Oh, no, sorry, my English. Um, what did you say again about the numlock situation? I didn't catch that. Oh, I'm sorry. So when you're using um, amber, when you're using XLEAP in amber, make yep. sure that numlock is switched off. Oh. oh okay. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, um, the drop down menus don't work. Okay. Um, which is very, very, very frustrating um, for everybody involved. So yeah, be careful of that because um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
Other questions? Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, um, I, I would like to ask about the metal centers. Uh, is how it works in amber? Is it possible to make flexible complex or is something that you, it needs to be froze during the simulation? So, so when you've got a metal center, you want to know if you have to um, restrain it in place or... Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about if we need to froze this metal center or it is flexible uh, or how to, to set up these two types of... Uh, okay, so systems. you've got... Yeah, you've got lots of options with metal centers, actually. Um, so um, I would so so I would use the, the metal center builder in Chimera. I would make sure that if you're not an expert on protein metal interactions, that you are you either look for a structure that's very similar to one that you're interested in, or um, you you ask an expert because um or if you're a chemist it's fine right but um but it can be quite tricky so amber has um both bonded and non-bonded force fields for metal centers um certainly for it, it's got a zinc um a special zinc parameter set um that's very useful um so I, I would advise, so, so you need to think, it, it, it is completely possible to build anything, I would argue, in amber, um, but it's, it, it, it's more difficult, the harder the chemistry that you're trying to represent. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, so, um, okay, so some of these questions I can answer and some of them I'm not going to be so great at, okay? So, Hi, uh, can I hear Hello? Yeah. So, uh, in Amber, can you uh, incorporate the charm force field or OPLS force field or like that for protein? Um, I think if you could, so if you could make an Amber topology file yeah. um, with the charm force field in it, then it would run it. Um, but certainly you would be able to, um, I mean, I would probably use Gromax. Yeah, that's, that's right. In, in Gromax, yeah. we can do that. But in Amber, it is, it's possible anyway to use those force fields? Um, I wouldn't, actually. Um, because because so, sometimes if I, if I compare the data from the Gromax and Amber, so how can I compare? Because in a Gromax, I, I'm using the different force field. In Amber, I'm using the different force field. So how can I compare the data from the uh, two different softwares? Right, okay. So, I mean, that's, so I don't think that running your, if you ran two simulations, one in Gromax and one in Amber, with exactly the same parameters, exactly the same time step exactly the same um type of thermostat there shouldn't in principle be any difference in, in different force field no problem yeah oh. but of course your trajectories won't be the same because trajectories are stochastic yeah yeah that, that's okay. so oh. um yeah 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 oh, okay thank you so much. um okay so I'm going to, um, so this question here, do you usually use the charges provided in the force field? Yes, we absolutely do, except when we're parameterizing new ligands. Um, so, and it is possible to use SPC. Um, and thanks Eric for posting the reference to the lipid um database because that is exactly eric what i would do if i was worried about embedding my protein in a membrane correctly i would go there first and see if it was available to me okay so i think what i'm going to do now i'll take more questions afterwards but i'm just going to have a go 
at showing you how to set up an amber simulation. Okay, so I want to um, share my screen, but I want a different screen now. I think it's this one. No. Okay, here we go. So the molecule that we're going to build um, is called, rather interestingly, I really liked the name, it's called 6UFO. And um, so 6UFO.pdb. So I was able to find a version of 6UFO.pdb in PDB Redo, and I'm going to show you that file now in VMD. Um, and it is this one, final.pdb. So this is the one I downloaded from um, PDB Redo. Okay, so here it is. So the first thing that I noticed is that there are two copies of the protein and the ligand in there. Um, so I'm gonna have to delete one of them um, because I only want to run a simulation of one. So that's one thing I'm going to have to do. Let's just make it a bit bigger. So you can also see, I'm sure, that there's lots of other stuff in the PDB file. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do graphics representations going to make the protein secondary structure. New cartoon. And then I'm going to make everything. Hi, Sarah. Thing. Sorry. Yes. Um, we can only see your terminal window at the moment. Oh, no. OK. That's really weird. Thank you. Um, OK. Yeah, the screen share thing generally only gives you one window at a time, which is a real nightmare for graphics. I know, I know. I sort of thought I'd be in the right place, um, but I am i don't know what you're seeing and what I'm seeing. Um, and it's Currently, quite... we're seeing you, but if you share the graphic output window from the VMD, then we should see that, I okay. think. I'll try that. Okay. Um... So what I'm going to do, okay, is I'm going to try and share my screen again. And um, so let's try that one. Can you see a protein? Nope. No. We're seeing text again. Seeing... Okay, so what I'll try and do is... Um, that's all right. Can you now see VMD? Uh, nope. Right, I have no idea what's happening. Why can nobody see any text? People can't write. What if you share your screen, your, but not just one window, your full screen? Uh, Can you see the protein now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we see your whole desktop now, including the VMD window. That's correct. Brilliant. Thank you, everybody. I don't know why I could. I, I think I was trying to um, I was trying to be too clever and I had things I prepared in different. <laughs> Thank you. OK. Right. OK, so now we can see the protein. Um, apologies for that slight hiccup, everybody. So graphics representation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to display everything that isn't protein in um, as van der Waals because that's going to make it stick out. So I'm going to say that that's not protein. Colour by name. 
colour by Van der Waals. Okay. Not pretty. Thank you. And now we can see all of these blobs. So these yellow, sorry, these red blobs here, of course, those are the oxygens of water molecules. And we can also see in here our, this is our ligand here. So um, let's make that, let's just make that licorice because that's going to make it a bit clearer. So we can see our ligand. And then we might, we can also see some other stuff that I don't like the look at, look like the look off. So there's this thing here. If I click on it, it's some sort of something horrible in the crystallization. So we're going to want to get rid of that. Um, there's another one down here um, that we're going to want to delete. And, but I did like the look of this. This is a sodium ion in here. Um, I did like the look of that, so I'm going to keep that. So what we need to do now is we need to edit our PDB file with something like Emacs or whatever editor you, you like. And we need to manually go into the PDB file and delete all of the waters that we don't think we want and delete these little other bits of stuff that we don't think are biologically relevant. And we just want to leave our protein and our ligand. And one of the things that we want to check before we do that is we want to just check that there are no bridging waters between our ligand and our protein. Because if waters are forming a bridge, they're probably structurally important and we want to include them. In this simulation, we've decided that um, actually none of the structural waters were important and I've deleted all of them. So the first thing you need to do, you get your PDB file, you take a look at it, you work out what's in there that you don't want and there'll always be something and you need to think about that very carefully. And then you delete all of the things that you don't want and save that in a new PDB file. And I do that with a text editor like Emacs. Now, it's not important for this protein, um, but for other proteins, you'll often find that there are missing loops that need adding, and you can do that in Chimera, because if you've got very flexible loops, they're not often seen in the crystallography. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now, let's delete that. Molecule delete, file oh, new molecule browse. So this is the file I made, um, load, and this one's called 6UFO um, um, clean.pdb. There we go, there's our ligand, there's our protein, and I liked this sodium, so I left it in there because I thought it was, I thought that looked important because it seems quite embedded in the channel. So this is what we're gonna run a simulation of now that we've deleted all the stuff from the outside. And um, what we also want to do is we want to make a PDB file that's of the ligand only. So we want another PDB file that's just the ligand and no protein. And I've made one of those, so I'm just gonna show it to you. Um, so there's just the ligand. So I have this PDB file and I have the PDB file of my complex. So now we're ready to um, run antichamber. So antichamber is the um, program that will take a PDB file and it does um, a very, very simple very cheap and very dirty semi-empirical calculation of what the partial charges should be. 
and gives you a force field. So I'm going to show you the command, but I'm not going to execute it because it does take about five minutes. So, um, so this is the command for running antechamber. So antechamber minus I, so this is your input file. This is our ligand PDB file that we made. And then we tell it FI means what's, what's the file format. So that's PDB. It's going to output this thing called a mole 2 file, which is a, basically it's a residue template and it contains the partial charges. And that's the output file format. This minus C here is what charge model you're using. So that's BCC. The atom types we're using a GAF2 because we're using the GAF2 force field. And this is a very important bit here. This minus NC minus one tells you the charge on your ligand and your ligand is a charge minus one. So you run this antechamber command and then you get all of this stuff coming out, antechamber underscore AM1 BCC. So this is, these are the um, output files from the quantum mechanical calculation semi-empirical calculation, um, and we end up with this ligand mol2 file. And then we need one more command, which I will show you. Um, so we then need this command. This palm check command. And what this palm check command does is looks at this mol2 file, sees if there are any missing parameters and writes them out into this FRC multiplier. So now you've done antechamber and palm check, you've got all of the building blocks that you need for LEAP to be able to build your ligand as well as your protein. Now, the other issue that you have is you've got a crystal structure. So you will notice that because you've got a crystal structure, you've got no protons. Now, Charlie's going to talk a lot about protonation states again tomorrow. But one way in which you can assign protonation states is structure editing at H. We need to make sure that we're considering hydrogen bonds because, of course, if you've got if you can form a hydrogen bond when you don't have a proton, but you can't form one when you do and you're near to something that wants to form a proton, then that's going to affect your um, PKA, your protonation state. So we want to consider hydrogen bonds. We click OK. It adds the hydrogens. We have a quick check of the ligand. And one of the things we're quite interested in here is I hope you can see that there's a hydrogen bond between this acid and the ligand here. So we're very, very glad that Chimera hasn't added a proton here. And that's why this ligand's negatively charged. That's why we had to say it was negatively charged when we ran antechamber because we suspect that, that this group here is deprotonated because of this nice bond that's formed. Okay, so we've protonated our structure in Chimera. We saved that PDB file, and now we're going to start XE. Okay. Okay, so we start leap. And now we're going to want to um, we're going to want to load in our force field. So load in our force field source leaprc.protein.ff14sb. That's the protein force field. It's leaprc.gaf2. That's gaf. That's our solvent and ions. So FF14SB, that's the protein force field. GAF is our generalized amber force field. That's what we need for our ligand. 
and then we need the water and the iron force field as well. Now, the next thing that we have to do is load in the parameters that we obtained from antechamber for our ligand. And we need to be very careful that the name that we call the ligand in LEAP is the same as the name that the ligand is called in the PDB file that we loaded in originally and the MOL2 file that we obtained from that PDB file. Otherwise, Amber isn't going to understand it. So let's see if it will work. So we load in the MOL2 file first. Okay. And then we load in the extra parameters. So load amber params 6UFO underscore ligand dot FRC mod. Okay, so we've loaded in our um, force field for the protein, force field for the ligand, and force field for the solvent. So let's just have a look and see what we've got. So if I type list, this is wonderful, right? Because I get a list of all of the different residue templates that Amber now understands. And if you can squint here, here's our ligand, Q5B. So I can see that it's read it in. And then, of course, we've got all of the other normal stuff. You know, we've got all of the amino acids. We've got um, water boxes. We've got CNN termini for all of the amino acids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now we're going to do the really brave bit. And this is the bit that's always a bit scary. We're actually going to load in our PDB file. So I'm loading in the PDB file that I saved from Chimera that I protonated, remembering, of course, that when I protonated it, I considered the hydrogen bonds. Oh, OK. Okay, so I've loaded in my PDB file and I'm slightly worried about how small my um, amber window is. So I'm going to tell you um, what it did. So when I managed to type in the file name correctly, um, it read in the PDB file and it said it created a new atom within one of my histidine residues. And um, it said, well, I created this new atom, but actually my residue template had the right number of atoms in it. So maybe the atom name was just wrong and it asked me to check it. So let's have a look at it. So I'm going to I'm going to use the edit function. I can type edit PDB and it brings up um, a visualization of my molecule, admittedly not a not particularly easy one all the time but it does bring up a visualization of my molecule so this is my sodium in the middle here but i should somewhere have another rogue residue yes i can just i can see it so this little thing here is my proton that um, Leap added that it complained about, okay? And what's really interesting is that um, when, when Chimera writes out the protonation states, 
um, it doesn't change the name of the residue. So everything, all of the histines are called, um, are called his. But this one just has, it's, so it's just put the proton here instead of here, right? So this just means that instead of um, HIE, we should have HIV. So this means that we need to change the name. This histidine is different is because there's an interaction with um, one of the groups on our histidine that is sufficiently strong to switch which of the nitrogens is most likely to be protonated. So we need to take this very seriously because um, Chimera has done something helpful for us. So I just want to show you a few other things about um, XLeak while we're here that I quite like. So I'm going to highlight a bit of our structure. Just take this little bit here. And then I'm going to do edit, edit selected atoms. And it brings up this big table, right? And what's nice about this big table is it tells you for every atom in the residues you've highlighted, it tells you what the name is. It tells you what your atom type is. Remember your atom type determines your van der Waals parameters, your connectivity, your bonded parameters, etc. It tells you the partial charge and all of this stuff is if you want to do free energy perturbation so we don't have to worry about it. These bits are the important bits. So it's here, do not hit this button. If you hit this button, you're gonna close the whole thing. So table, close table. We can do display um, residue names. So we can look and see where all of our different residue names are. Let's switch that off. I like this one. You can display all the partial charges. I like to have a look at them. Some of them are massive, absolutely huge. Um, so let's just have a look. So here, this oxygen is minus 0 0.6. So this is over, you know, it's, it's bigger than half a charge unit. So these are really big. So having this unit editor here, let's switch those off. Um, display, let's switch those off, that's a bit better. And to get rid of the highlighted region, it's shift and select. So you can also do all sorts of things in here. You can erase things, draw things, delete things. It's, um, it's very powerful, although it is a bit clunky, I admit. And it does look a bit 70s now with the brown. So let's close that unit. So what we actually want to do is um, I went, so I went and I actually changed the name of the relevant histidine in my PDB file. And then what I do is start again. So I'll quit that. So X leak minus F. So what I'm going to do is because I don't want to type all that in again, and I save the commands, I'm just going to run my leap script. And what I've done here is I've read in a new PDB file that's called final clean h underscore hid.pdb. So I've changed the name of the histidine in that um, PDB file. So that should now, that's now fine. Leaps read it in. It's got no problems with it whatsoever. So now I'm happy with my protein and ligands. Now I need to think about adding counter ions and water. So I can do charge PDB and it tells me that the charge of my system is minus four. So I know that I need to add um, at least four positively charged ions. So we'll do add ions um, PDB. So we have to, so we do add ions to add the ions PDB because that's what we've called our, um, our molecule. And um, I'm going to do Na plus to add sodium and zero to neutralize. There we go. It adds the ions.
Now, what I would normally do now is I would add enough irons to make it up to um, 150 millimolar. But actually, what LEAP is doing is when it adds the ions to your system, it's doing quite a sophisticated calculation. So it's thinking, what is the electrostatic potential around my molecule and where is the best place to put a positively charged ion? So actually placing a lot of ions can take quite a long time. So here, I'm just going to neutralize it. So now we've added our ions. What we can do is add the water. So to do that, we do solvate box, PDB, because that's what we called our structure when we loaded it in, PDB, tip 3P box, 10 point naught. So this says solvate your um, molecule that I call PDB with a box containing tip 3P water mo molecules, which is the most common water model, and put 10 angstroms of water around it, okay? It's done that, so let's just have a look at it. There we go. So here's the system that we've built. Okay, unit close. And now's the moment of truth. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and save our parameter file that contains the parameters and the connectivities and our coordinates. So set the command, save amber palm PDB, that tells it what to save. And I'm gonna call it now a demo underscore what dot top demo underscore what dot CRD. And let's see if it's gonna spit it out at me. Fantastic. So what this tells us, because it has actually saved the topology and um, parameter file, it means that Amber has understood every single atom that it's loaded in, in that PDB file. It's understood all of the parameters associated with that atom, and it's completely happy about how everything is connected. So now we're at this stage, we can run a simulation. So let's close Leap. And what I'm going to do, because you probably don't want to wait for me to submit it to the supercomputer, sit in the queue, etc. I'm going to show you one I did earlier. Okay, so here's the simulation. I ran it for 250 nanoseconds. So let's just show it to you. Protein, new cartoon, secondary structure, create rep, not protein. Band of owls. Okay, so here's your protein, here's your ligand, and um, the surrounding is counter ions. So if I play that, you can see the protein moving, the counter ions moving, and the ligand moving. So I deleted the water from this visualization. It was present in the simulation, but it's been deleted from this visualization. So you can just see the protein, the ligand and the ions. And at this stage, what you would do, especially with a ligand like this, which contains some sort of fluorine, which is not a very usual, um, but it's not a sort of usual chemistry that we find in proteins, you'd worry very, very much about whether GAF had done a good job of this. 
So you'd look very carefully at the ligand interactions between with your protein and you think, do I think that those are realistic? And here, I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with it. It doesn't go anywhere. It looks very sensible. Um, and it seems to be behaving itself. Okay.